Boom, we're on, Frankie and boy. That, is that Iceland? Ah, yeah, Iceland. Ah. <laughs> in the day's guest, we've got the legendary Frank McAvaney. How the you day buddy? say, good mate. Thank, first and foremost, thanks for coming on, mate. No problem. Um, but they do say gods attract gods, but in this occasion, mate, I think it's shaggers attract shaggers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I, I don't know what I attract now, but anyway. It's just that, like I say, mate, there's no questions yes. in this show. It's just, we just talk, mate. Just uh, okay. go back to the past where you grew up, obviously, the mountains. Mm -hmm. Just go back to then, mate, where it all started. Well, I, grew up, I grew up in the mountain before I played football. I had 14 jobs. I mean, I, had, I worked, I did what? I left school about 14 and uh, started working in a <laughs> clothing factory and... And it was good, you know, it was good fun. And it was, they used to make dressing gowns. And I used to get some out on the Fridays and all that and sell them to the old, old dears in Milton. And ice cream vans, it was brilliant because there were ice cream vans. Um, you'd see all the women coming out with the, the dressing gowns on you, you soap them. So <laughs> everybody in Milton would my dressing gowns. It was great. <laughs> I was, I was an entrepreneur way back. That's it. <laughs> that was, that was you making them put on the dressing gowns and then they changed the team. No, <laughs> some of them you wouldn't, nah, nah, nah. Some of them, nah. <laughs> but it was good, Mountain was good for me. It was, um, I, I loved it. I was born in Springburn, but I went to Mountain when I was, I was, mum took me there when I was one. Mum mom and dad didn't have nothing, you know, mm -hmm. James, but it, it was great. We, we didn't have a lot, but they, they, we got a lot of love and all that. And, and it was good fun. Mountain was, was a good place. Um, Believe it or not, um, used to leave the doors opened and, and the neighbours would look after you. You know, my mum worked, my dad worked, and the neighbours would look after you. So mm -hmm. it was um, it was pretty good. You know, it was a pretty good place to get brought up. Uh -huh. When did the football start? Then when did you start realising you had a gift? I used to play down at Deaf and Dumb School down right. in the mountain, and we used to play um, just in a tennis side, the usual, mm -hmm. first to twenty one or the older boys, and uh, we used to play and. And because I never played football till I was really a professional till I was 19, people say, where did you get your touch? And that's where I learned my touch because it was gravel pitch. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the older boys you play with, if you didn't control it, you know, they, they'd come through you. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't, you know, they didn't hold back. So it was great for me. So I, I learned all through. I used to play Sundays, sometimes during the week, you know, whenever I could, we used to jump the fence and go and play in a deaf and dumb school. And it was, it was great. I, I loved it. And we used to play in the street. Growing up and you know the lamp post uh, to the, the fence and the, the jumpers doing as a goal. It's great. It's all changed now, but it's fine. When there's signs everywhere, you know, no football on the grass mm -hmm. and you no know, ball games and you're mm -hmm. like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, and I just I think it's I think it's so wrong and I think it's got such a lot to do with Scottish football that mm -hmm. you're not allowed to do it. If you want to play football, now you've got to pay for it. No, you know it's wrong. I mean, it's wrong. Boys, I mean, I know you had a good pal of mine, Andy McLaren, on and. And I know he would have spoken about it, but he's doing a great job because some people have not got the internet and all that, and all this nonsense the government say that they want to play on their iPads and all that. Some people can't afford the internet, so that's how poor people are in Mountain Springburn. Uh -huh. And it's terrible, but I know you're a lot younger than me, but I've never seen this country in such a state that's in and in. No, it is. You know, but I know you've done that thing, and well done for that, um, Thanks the a lot. Home th homeless thing, but... I've never seen so many food banks and people try, you know, people don't get mm -hmm. things to, my, my parents weren't, weren't, they were poor, but we had, we had the dinner every night, you know, the two of them worked and, you know, we weren't, we had shoes on our feet and all that, but we had a lot, as I say, we had a lot of love, but nowadays I think, my God, it's, it's just getting terrible. It's a turmoil and all that, it is a worry for a lot of people, especially the deprived areas. Yeah. When you got line postal, Frank, <clears throat> you're set up for failure, what you've got is chemists, bookies, pubs. Chippies, uh, Indians, uh, you're surrounded by that. How the yeah. fuck can you get anything positive for yeah. that? Do you know what I mean? There's, I like there's four or five bookies in Saddison Street. I know. Like there's two, three I chemists. Know. I know. You're, you're in these deprived areas, you're set up for failure. You're set up. Well, you're set up for the, the chemists, you walk into chemists, it's like going to the Bronx, it's Aye. like the bars and all that. You're like, oh, I know what you do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you get it, and it's, yeah, I walked uh -huh. in there for shampoo, they looked at me as if I was stupid. <laughs> I know. You like some like methadone in that shampoo? You know, yeah, I know. Do, you need, do you need an injection? No, 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 I just want some shampoo. <laughs> but for a man yourself, Faye Milton, to get out, uh, when did you, when did, who was your first team you signed for, St Mun? St Mun was, John St Burrow was the first team. The junior team? The junior team. I, I'll tell you what happened. I used to go and play, I used to watch Celtic all the time. My dad took me all the time and it was great fun, to be honest with you. And uh, I used to go to the game. My dad took me and my uncle and we used to go. It was like a big thing, you know, and... And I was old enough to go money, he used to let me in the jungle and all that, as long as I was back 20 minutes before the, because we used to go to Celtic ends, as long as 20 minutes before the end and all that kind of stuff. And it was great, I loved it. But I still played football at the time, and I used to play in the summer. And I remember playing for Coxaith St. Pat's, 
my, my, a, a cousin of mine got me a trial with, uh, I can't remember the name of the team, but they were, uh, they were the YM or something, no one posted YM, but some other one. They were one of the good teams, amateur teams, and this guy said he wasn't good enough. And I'm like, okay. And I went and played in the summer with Coach Ice and Pats, and Pat McCluskey, who was coaching. So I went and played, and he says, look, I played a game and uh, against this team that, um, can't remember who it was that long ago. But anyway, I absolutely battered them, you know, because they told me I wasn't good enough. So it was one name. Uh, I battered them, scored a couple of goals. But I was playing, I was always a midfield player. Mm -hmm. And I says, I don't want to play anymore. And he says, look, can you come back? We've got a game next week. And I'm going, nah, I don't want to. And he says, playing against Coastside Rangers. And I went, oh, I'll play that one. So it was, a, it was like the mini rivalry, if you like, mm -hmm. Celtic Rangers. So Coastside St. Pats, Coastside Rangers, big rivalry, big, big crowd. At the Coast East Rangers junior ground, so it was good. I, I loved it. I mm -hmm. uh, nearly got sent off, but I never. But luckily, um, you know the referee told me to get there. You know, watch my tackling, and mm -hmm. you know, get there quicker. And try to tell him I was getting there as quick as I could. You know, <laughs> 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 but it was good. It was, they, you could talk to referees, and then, as I say, I was walking through Glasgow in the Celtic game get cancelled when I was old enough to go on, and and some of my pals were there and asked me to go and play for a team called the Two Hundred Club. And uh, and the manager asked me to come along because he was short of players and, and he would give me a couple of beers after it. And that's basically, and I, I went there and I played and there was a couple of scouts watching the boy I was playing against. And uh, I don't know what happened to that poor boy, but my, my life took a wee turn that day. Is that <laughs> so you went to no, I went, to, I signed for Johnson Borough because they gave me £500, so... Aye. And it gave me cash, so it was great. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, invested it well, did you think? Invested it well, yeah, it was done for Sunday. <laughs> 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 it was super, I was buying everyone in Glasgow a drink that night, it was great. I was the king that night, it was good fun, but... Um, that's a lot of dough back then, was it? was a lot of dough, for yeah. junior team. But they, they knew because there was there was three professional clubs wanting me to go on trial, uh -huh. so they says, they took a chance and they gave me uh -huh. £500 uh -huh. and says, we'll still let you go on trial with the professional clubs. But see, back then, so when I went So when I went to sign for... I actually went on trial with... Thistle mm -hmm. and Betty Old, my idol, one of my idols, told me I wasn't good enough. You're joking? No, he gave me a couple of games of sub, and you don't do that with, with, with trialists. And um, he said I wasn't good enough, and I, th and I knew I was better than his team because his team were over. Mm -hmm. And I told him that, so maybe I shouldn't have, but. Um, <laughs> maybe that's how we got the Aye, so no, he, 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 I just put my head under the water. He was in, I was sitting in the bath, and he came in, we better, hey, you're not good enough. Junior, because I was thin. Junior's your. Um, Junior's your, your level, and I'm saying, oh, okay. So I'm back to Johnson, but I struck up this partnership with a guy up front called Ian McLeod, who was great. I'm still pal to this day, which is, which is tremendous, you know, way back then. And then I went, I went and trial with Simon, and I had, had two good games with Simon, and then I, my third game I got sent off against Morton, the local derby. And it was a Renfrewshire Cup tie. <clears throat> I was playing as a trialist and I get sent off because the, the guy in midfield was a nasty piece of work for Morton so uh, you know Mark bringing for Morton came out yeah. the, the Morton boy came out me and uh, I get sent off and I took some punishment off him to be fair and the manager Jim Clooney I thought I'd blown it and the manager says we knew you had the ability but we didn't know you had the heart so because I get sent off it, it worked for me mm -hmm. so and I signed and then he got sacked a couple of days later <laughs> <laughs> right, you just think because the news getting sacked. I don't know. I, hope, I don't know, but it worked well. And the manager came in. The new manager came in, uh, Ricky McFarlane, who was brilliant to me. He was under twenty-one manager at Scotland. He was a physio, so I couldn't even fake an injury. You know, in the Monday mornings, I usually fake injuries on Monday mornings, but I couldn't even do that because he was a physio, uh, or it, so he knew when you were faking it. Or so it was great. But he put me in his Scotland team. He gave me my big start. He put me in the first team. No, he put me in the Scotland under twenty ones. He was a manager and he took me this year go like this. He took me to Italy in the quarter final mm. of his European Championships. We played over there. What a team this was. Midfield with me, I was in midfield. Neil Simpson, Neil Cooper, Jim Bett, um Dougie Bell was there. Oh, it was just incredible midfield. George McCluskey, we uh, Ian McDonald up front, and we had Richard Goff not playing. It was magnificent. Mm -hmm. It was just a great team. I mean, some of the boys in that midfield would just, would just walk. Mm -hmm. Any any team nowadays, you know, Ty Cooper, God rest him, uh, and Neil Simpson. You know, they were great for Aberdeen. They were stalwarts, weren't they? So mm -hmm. you'll not remember them, but back in the day, they were they were really good players. But um, yeah, so I scored a goal over in Italy, and you know, talking about going back to your roots. 
It's <laughs> quite a fair. They, we played the game in Canton Zero. It was a way down. And the heat lands of Italy somewhere, you know, some lands, I don't know where it was. And uh, we went down there and we drew, drawn down each at Hamden. I wasn't playing that game. I went over there and, and of course, we beat them when I scored. So uh, we beat them when I'm the Ross slinging bottles and all that. Are the Italians are ah, fucking nuts? Aye, they were nuts. So, uh, the Ross slinging bottles and I'm picking them up, kidding them, I'm drinking them and all that. <laughs> so they couldn't get it. I was like, you're kidding on, Frank, you're drinking them. <laughs> no, it was empty, miserable, miserable bastards. It was <laughs> empty bottles. I know that daft Italians. <laughs> when, so when, mm. after the St. Murn, was it West Ham? I, mean, I, played, I played five years at Simon, had a great time at Simon, absolutely brilliant, loved it. Four years in midfield, one year up front. And then I went to West Ham, John Lyle bought me in. And uh, I get told I was, I was going to Celtic. I get told my last game, one of the games at Love Seat, playing against Celtic, and I get told that was my last game, I was going to go to Celtic. After it, and, and they never seen me, I was, I was gutted, you know. Mm-hmm. Was that? But so- it done me a favour, because I went to London. I'd never been out of Glasgow, I was, I was uh-huh. a Glasgow boy, I'd never been out of Glasgow. Uh-huh. Apart from the holidays with my parents and all that. But so, your first season for West Ham, were you no know, second top goal scorer? <coughs> I should have been top, but anyway, I, did, I didn't was, take penalties. Gary Lineker was the top. He scored 12 penalties and I, I uh-huh. didn't take any. So. But you took West Ham at their biggest finish that season? We should have won it, to be fair to you, James. The we league? Should, the, aye, we should have won the league easily because the only thing that beat us that year was the weather. We never played for six weeks mm-hmm. because of the weather. It was so poor. And then we had to play Saturdays, Mondays and Wednesdays for catch five up. weeks to catch up. Because we get... We get Never happened nowadays. We had three, re- four replays against in the cup tie against Ipswich, three against Man United to, to, before we progressed. And it was terrible. The, and we only played fifteen players that year. Uh-huh. All that's all we used fifteen players. So it was great. I, I loved. I loved playing. I'd, I'd, I would rather play than train. I didn't like training. So I think majority of people do, but do they? they nah, but you know that, that's why it annoys me. I'm going. People saying that players are tired now. I'm going. Uh-huh. It's fucking September. <laughs> the season just started I know. how can you be tired mm. I mean it annoys me I mean the boy I look at Rogic and I'm going what a talent that boy is you know Paddy McCourt was the same and I'm going how can they know last 90 minutes mm-hmm. now call me old fashioned but I hated running I hated going around Strathclyde Park mm-hmm. but why not give these boys a chance because this obviously the modern technology and fitness isn't it working for these boys Go and open their lungs and give them a give them, give the boy a chance, you know, because I would love to see Roger play 90 minutes. See, they're getting a lot of injuries in there and all, but do you think that's the day of the training? Or the, I don't is? know. It's just, but do you know what I mean? When he's, when he's knackered mm-hmm. after an hour, you go, there's something not right. Mm-hmm. Go and open your lungs out. You know, I'm, some of the managers I played under would have gotten fit. You know, and mm-hmm. I, I know it's no brand. It's the way the world and it's all changing. You, it's all movement. It's all movement. Nutrition. People, people tell me, people tell me you might get injured. You know, <laughs> you're fucking injured walking down the stairs. You know, that's, I mean? that's my point. I go, I go. You're having a laugh, aren't you? People go, no, you don't want you to play this week. And go, what? Can you imagine me putting one of the hat monitors? Fucking something, something <laughs> nights out after a Sunday night. Fuck <laughs> hell, they're just fucking exploded. They're just man's deep. They're just took me hospital every Monday. They took me hospital saying he's dead. <laughs> See after your West Ham man, because I know even on the walking yes. show, that's when you say your life turned round. In what, in what experience? Well, I scored 15 goals and there was no TV coverage. Mm-hmm. And they were arguing over £300,000. Something like that. It was embarrassing. So that was it. That was it. The, the extent of it, basically. And so everyone up here couldn't, didn't see it. And it was, uh, I scored 14 goals by October or something. It was incredible. I just mm-hmm. took this fucking, this odds. And I played, started, he bought me as a midfield player and the other player got injured on the Saturday. And he put me up front. 10 minutes to go or something. Then on Tuesday night, he played me up front with Tony Cotty. And I scored two, and, and the, the poor boy that got injured couldn't get back in. Because <laughs> <laughs> me and him just took off. We were uh-huh. the golden boys, and, and it was great. Everyone in football knew me. But James, I was going out on a Saturday night, and I was partying, and I was just doing what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. because nobody in London cares about footballers. Mm-hmm. You're not here to be on end all. Aye. Down in London, it's Rod Stewart, Elton John, Charles Michael, they're Aye. all sitting in corners, and you're like, what? It's, nobody bothers me. So I just wanted to be that, enjoy myself and see what I could do. And I, and I loved it, flag boying and all that. I loved all that. Mm-hmm. And then I got asked to go on the Wogan Show because I was just about to make my debut in November for Scotland. And they asked me to go on the Wogan Show. Now, 23 million people watched it. <laughs> and, uh, and I was on my, my idol who gave me a Play of the Year up when I was at St. Mun, a Scottish Play of the Year thing, uh, um, Dennis Law. Mm-hmm. So I was on with Dennis, which is brilliant. I mean, 
Uh, it doesn't get much. Peter compared me to Dennis. People say, you know, they compared me to Dennis Law and all that. But, you know, I didn't reach his heights, but, you know, I think it's a wee bit unfair because Dennis used to stay on a Friday night, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Boring bastard. <laughs> oh, my God. No, my God. <clears throat> but it was, um, no, nah, it was good. to go in there with my door and made such a good laugh. And it didn't really bother me, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, 23 million people went on. But the, the, uh, there was a programme called The Young Ones and there was the, the boy Aid Emerson or something like that, one of the crazy boys was on combusting through the walls and all that. It was great fun. And I realised what it happened because I played on the Saturday and then my mum was going to Australia. My brother lives in Australia. She was going to Australia on the Sunday. So she flew down to Edinburgh, Heathrow. Uh, flew down um, to Heathrow from Glasgow and she had a four hours layover, change of planes, whatever, to get to Australia. So she said, I'll come meet for a bit of lunch. I went to Heathrow Airport, and as soon as I walked in, I knew my life had changed. Because mm-hmm. all the old ladies and, you know, people that had nothing to do with football Celebrity. come up and want to and all that, and I'm going, it was just... Did that enhance uh, your career, Frank, or did it, was it the downfall there? My, no, it enhanced my career. I, I took it. Uh, you know what, I've never... I'd like to think I've never s- said not an autograph or a photograph. Mm. And, or an interview. Or an interview. I mean, people, people go like to you, you know, they say, yeah, do you not get pissed off at I'm going, you're joking, aren't you? You know, it's how, how can you get pissed off for that? What a life playing football and people loving you, loving you, and you go. Fuck. I mean, I, I went to, I went to the, um, I got invited to the tattoo, military tattoo. Mm-hmm. This is how bad, embarrassing I get. I was there, I got invited backstage, back, backstage, back behind the castle, but and they're all having a drink, and all that, all the papers, and all. Mm-hmm. They're all great, great people, and they're all coming in, going, "Oh, you're my hero," and I'm going, "What?" And they've all got these badges. I'm going, fuck, "I'm not a hero. I just played football." Mm-hmm. You know, these guys have got badges for everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, Iraq, Afghanistan, mm-hmm. you lot. These boys are getting bullets flung out of their head yeah. and, and they think I'm a hero and I'm going, nah, it's, it's so You've different. You've got that you know. lovable character, Frank, where you yeah. are a good guy and you, mm-hmm. you're fucking nuts and you're I, crazy, you're I, one of the boys. Do you know what I've done? I've just done everything that anyone in the I, I came for the terracing. Tommy Burns, God bless him, he, he used to say to me, you're so different because I came for the terracing mm-hmm. on the park. You know, other boys at Celtic when I was there, they're all Celtic supporters, but they grew up through the academy and all that. Thanks. But so they never really got to support the team. Mm-hmm. Whereas I was one of the, I was there in the mm-hmm. terrace and, you know, watching them. Even at St. Martin, we, me and McDougall used to go to Celtic games. Midweek games, or not, we never had a game. You know, I used, used to go to Celtic bus and mm-hmm. all <laughs> But just, you came one of the boys, I know, but I think know. that's where the, the, the lifestyle came in. I know everybody goes to the football, they day drink, they day can have a blow in that see when you were doing in London because you were saying you know mm-hmm. George Best and yes. all, the, all the the massive names do you know what I mean listen George when I'm down with the same manager George George mm-hmm. had the same business manager as me so Bill McMurdo so um, it was great George just he just won it everyone thinks you're you're so different and you know everyone thought George was earning the same money as we were making at the time we were making good money at the time but not life changing money mm-hmm. which they're making nowadays but people still think I was making that kind of the money they're making now. People think you're making that back then. So aye, aye. they don't understand that you've got to try and make a, make a pound note somewhere. Aye, aye. And for, George, but the biggest problem with George, he was such a star. You know? Aye, I mean, he was... Uh, two mass worlds a year after t- year. No, four. Was it? <laughs> four. Uh, and by the way, and he'll tell you he never turned up for one. <laughs> uh, incredible. Four. So, aye, so... It was, uh, and he makes a point of telling you never turned up for one of them. Uh, so that was five. <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, but what, a, what a, that glint, that mm. Irish glint in his eyes, mm. great character, great to be around. Drunk or sober, it was different class to me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it was, people say, I got, you know, it must have been good, got, I got a lot of advice off George, you know, it was great because there's nothing that I went through that he never went through. Uh, he's a legend, isn't he? And so it was good. Uh, and, you know, and I, and I miss him. I do, I, I got on with him. I used to go in, I remember once I was in his club, and he had a place called Blondes, I said, restaurant in Wainbar. And I'm in the restaurant with a few people, and the, the waiter comes around and says, George's in there. I said, oh, is he? He says, can you go and make sure he's all right? I'm saying, ah, he's pissed. <laughs> I said, I no problem. So I'm on my way through. And uh, he's on the bar himself, and I'm, so I sat beside him. I says, I says, you all right? And he looked and he said, Mark, how are you doing, son? I said, I'm all right. I said, fuck it, how you? You look all right. He's like, yeah, I'm all right. I said, you might come through and join us. He said, no. I said, who are you with? He said, can't remember. <laughs> and he's, but he's got a smell. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. got this glint and a smell. And I thought, hey, come on, just one join us. Just then, two gorgeous, gorgeous women 
girls, whatever you want, models, just stunners. Two absolute drop dead. Come out right to the toilet. And they just brushed me aside and the two of them got in beside George. And I went, is that who you're with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went, all oh, right. I said, you need a hand. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the girls, one of the girls says no. <laughs> brilliant. Oh, oh, what a beautiful man! And he, oh, the only picture he's done was unbelievable. He was pissed, but he just smiled. He was like that glint. And uh, you know what? I met Callum a couple of times, and I love the boy. So Aye, he's you know, a great. He's guy a great I met him. Well. Yeah, I spoke to his mum a few times. Angie as well. She does amazing I know, things. It was him. Um, I met Callum a couple of times. I had the night with him. Oh God! I used to wind him up. Say your dad was. A, your dad would have got everyone in for my hand. <laughs> 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 that's mad. Ah, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. But so. do you ever look at? Do you ever think think yourself lucky as well, Frank? That you could have, it could have spiraled out of control worse than what it was. The, the drinking or the partying. No, see the thing is, well, I never I never partied that as much as what they say when I was playing football. Mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't do you couldn't do what I'd done in a football part mm -hmm. if I was taking all these drugs and all that. I I got injured for nearly a year. I was out for nearly a year. And, uh, and it's a lonely big place to be injured mm -hmm. and I was just going to open the envelopes I was going to parties and, and that's when I started that's when I took drugs for the first time but it was it was like it wasn't every night it wasn't it wasn't you know you, you, the papers love to say you know you took it all the time and I was a mm -hmm. drug addict and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go and ask for help there's a lot of ex-players that I know ask for help say they're addicted and all that and they mm -hmm. weren't addicted it was just it was a social uh, but because, because they've asked for help, it seems to be acceptable. Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, you know, cause I'm not going to let some psychiatrist, I didn't need to pay a psychiatrist mm -hmm. to tell me I was taking too much drink and drugs. <laughs> I knew myself. <laughs> I, knew myself. <laughs> you know, I would rather keep the money and spend it and drink drugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean. I, was uh, just, I didn't need to go and speak to somebody. And then it just, you know, when I'm back playing football, it just stopped. I just mm -hmm. stopped having... And people couldn't understand why I could do that because that was, I wasn't addicted. Aye. I wasn't. I was only. It was only social. I think that was the void, but the loneliness when oh, yeah. no getting that attention, yeah. no on the park playing. Yeah, you feel lonely. You feel everything Terrible. comes in tap you. And Terrible, and it's you know it's a, a hard fight to come back mm -hmm. um, when you're out that long, and you need good people around about you. And you know, it was. Is that you're doing string fellows and actually your pals. Peter, Peter was good. You? Peter was great. Me, Peter was. I, I loved him. I, I loved the whole thing about Peter. Um, you know, everyone says, oh, he's this, but Peter was great. He was a businessman. Mm -hmm. He used to walk about, he always had a glass of champagne, but it wasn't champagne, it was water sometimes. A lot of time aye, it was water. And he's a businessman, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, people say to me, who's your, <laughs> people say to me a question answer a couple weeks ago, who was your mentors? I'm saying, the two of them died. <laughs> Hugh Hefner and Peter Smith. <laughs> You can ask her two better ones than that. I wanted his, I wanted his dressing gown, but they wouldn't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, see when eventually your boyhood heroes came in for you, Celtic, yes. how were you feeling? <clears throat> it was great for me because um, I didn't want to leave West Ham, but I love West Ham at the time. Was, that <clears throat> more, more the, was it West Ham or was it the, the lifestyle? No, I love West Ham. West Ham were brilliant. The, the fans took to me. Mm -hmm. You know what? I could I could have done what I wanted in West Ham because I think you did, Frank. <laughs> I know, but because I, I I done it on a Saturday, mm -hmm. you know, I done it on a Wednesday. I, I was always ready for the game, so the fans will accept that. The fans will accept because you're one of them. Are you still in connection with oh, the fans God, and my, loved yeah, in there? Yeah, big you time. You took them to the biggest ever finish, didn't big you? Big time. I'm, I'm it's huge in there, so mm -hmm. I'm bigger than them, but I'm here. You know, it's with the fans. It's mad. massive. It's incredible, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> you know, I've got I've got a few. Problems with, with it's not Celtic, but Celtic, my boyhood team, you know, they've mm. got, but sometimes you're not allowed to open your mouth and, I can and talk about Celtic, you know. And it's, it's one of them, I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed because, you know, they, they've got this the great season of their life, I mean, obviously 67, mm. and then with the Lisbon Lions, and you know, can't even match that. But one of the other big years was the centenary year, mm. and there's a 40 upside the board or the, or the heroes and legends of Celtic. And, there's a photo of the Centenary team and I'm the one that... That's it, aye. <laughs> so, so, I'm like, you know, I'm the one any special favours, you know, I don't deserve well, you it. You want the recognition but that you I do just, deserve. I, I wanted a team photo, at least in this the team photo. Yeah, in the team photo, I should be in the team photo, you know. Because you won the double that year. But it was a cup final as well and I scored the two goals. And I'm not in the photo. I don't even know that. Aye, I'm not in the photo, so I'm a wee bit pissed off with that, but listen. Did you ever go back to park? Do you still go back <clears> to park? I go back to park, I could have. Yeah, I took a box out, fuck. I know, I was giving them more money. <laughs> Fucking hell. They owed me money and I gave them more. I banged it to a boxer a couple of years with a partner of mine. And, 
and it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Number nine, we had the box. It was great. But you said. We used to have too many people in the box. <laughs> 40 handy. Oh, it's incredible, you know. Take that table out. We don't want any food. <laughs> Just get you, bodies your in. trophies, I know, because I know the, the double you did one, you gave your trophies to Willie Hockey. Willie and the... Lord, Lord Hockey. Willie was great. When I went... I, I was out of control when I was in Newcastle. Um, I got in a bit of bother and... It just it was life. It was just, you know, and, and you either... You know, go one way or you go the other. And I got my act together and I... I could do wee things, but you know, you need something, you need to be boost to get you in front again. And mm -hmm. um, my medals in my jersey, so uh, Lord Hawkes, I said to him, and he gave me some decent money for it. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, the only condition I get, I pay it back, you know, if I want them. And he says, Yeah, because they were lying in my drawer. I mean, they're just doing my drawer when I was, when I was in, after football, as I say, I was spiralled, but I, I thought enough's enough, and I need to get out of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Willie gave me money and, and I tried to give him back. He gave him a medal and I tried to give him the money and he wouldn't take it. So he, he's such a lovely guy, you know. He's, oh, fair play. Oh, that. he's brilliant. Him and, him, yeah, him and the other one, you know, they get a lot of stick, James Mortimer and Willie Hawking, you know. Mm -hmm. But they, they, everywhere they go, they always put money in a charity. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, and they're big rivals, you know, because it, it's like me and so McCoy's. Right. McCoy's like, we're, we're good pals, but, mm -hmm. you know, we kick crap at each other. Um, mm -hmm. We're bit of rivals on when we play get we played against each other, but you know, we're good pals. And, Who's and Willie and and James are good as right, well. Yeah. You know, so businessmen. Businessmen, but they've made, they've made they're only the same as us. They're humble mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. came for nothing, and and they've made a lot of money and 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 they try and help people. Out and you know, to be fair, Willie helped me out a lot. I was think the best thing. I think a lot. I put a post up there says a real welfare person. <coughs> How much money they make, or how many material possessions they have. It's about how much goodness they do the world, and how much good they do. Um, for people who do a lot of charity work, you don't hear about it. No, do you know what I mean? They don't, don't hear about it. You hear all the bad shit. I know. I mean, I went, I went Christmas there to James Mortimer. I asked me to come up and do something and cash for kids, and he's got a big warehouse. He's got a big warehouse over the south side, and it was just full of toys for they were putting out to kids and all that. And I'm going, and so me and a couple of X Rangers players and Celtic boys and that went and got my photos and all that. It's just incredible mm -hmm. the things that these boys do. You know, nobody knows about it, which is, which is, um, that's brilliant. Very good. Who's the best player you ever played with? Played with? Yes. There's a few. Kenny Douglas was up there. Kenny. Kenny. Um, Two Moulton boys. I was, I was, <laughs> I was, uh, I was fortunate. You know, I, I played in an era. Paul McStay was magnificent to play with at Celtic. Um, if he'd have left Celtic, he'd have got the recognition he deserved. They deserved because he was world class. He, mm. he was he was that good. But I was fortunate in the Scotland team to play with David Cooper. It was magnificent. Yeah. He was like a magician. Mm. Without, like, until he trained with somebody like that on a daily basis, you mm. know. Um, and Graham Souness was, you know, for all the about for all the about him, you know, what a player. Mm -hmm. Him and, soon as, him and Douglas probably helped me the most in my debut for Scotland. You know, they were mm -hmm. talking to me all the time. The two of them, great boys. And, you know, I'm still part of them now, so, yeah, good. The, tr the main thing is trying to make it as well. You need a lot of guidance, Frank, don't you? You need mm -hmm. people to take you under their wing as well, especially. Well, it's, it's one of them. I, I wasn't very fortunate. I actually have got a lot more caps, to be honest with you. But I feel like you get fair. five? I get five, five. I get five. But to be fair, the boys I was up against, Kenny... I made my debut with, which was a boyhood dream for me, because mm. in 77, when Kenny left Celtic, I was in tears. I thought my world had ended. So, you know, and then to be, to become a teammate has, then to become a pal has, and, you know, and it's just a bit surreal. To, to That's help. a dream, but Frank, that you've worked on. That's a dream that people are watching, people are listening, uh -huh. that you can make it, man, no matter oh, where you're playing. No boy, these boys are just, you know, I get in playing Kenny's or Marina's chat, golf day and all that, mm. and it's, it's great, and, you know, a couple of months ago, he was up with Marina and he was me and my missus met him at a Celtic function, and it was great. He's just a good lad, you know, he's Aye. just a great, you know, if everyone didn't know who he was when he went to Liverpool, but I thought I knew there was only one person who could take over for Keegan. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like a big football guy, so at that time, I, I was into a lot more football than what mm -hmm. I am now. I, you know, I think it's, something's lost a wee bit. Uh, I get annoyed at football now. Uh, it's not it's, the same, it's, is it? Mm, it's robots, you know. And, can I tackle, and I just, can I you do know, it? But I, I would love to see people doing more with the ball and go and take people mm. on. And I mean, like Paul Gascoigne said the other day in the paper, he says, you know, he treated the ball like a diamond if he had in, the, in their own half. He says, but once he got over the halfway line, he says, I just used to try things. Mm -hmm. 
He says, because the wooden tops, as he called them, the defenders. <laughs> <laughs> the wooden tops. They would take care of it if I lost it. Mm. <laughs> what a player he was, I know, wasn't he? You know, that, I, was, I was fortunate to play in that era. We all mm. David Cooper, Doug Leash, Paul McStay, you know, <laughs> Gaza, Loudrop, you know. Oh, I mean, it's that's some line-up, I think. Ah, it's magnificent. So, it's, um, they were all about when I played. So I was, mm -hmm. I was delighted. And the best goal scorer of them all, you know, McCoy's was, was mm -hmm. top draw. But even oh, yeah. I kept him out of the team. <laughs> <laughs> Bet he hates that I one. Know, he doesn't like it. I know. He was talking about it that day. I should have went to the World Cup um, in 86, but I took his place. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so oh, even though all your, all your Kerry Horan, Frank, and everything, you must have been dedicated as well behind can closed doors at Ned. I, I, I take it personal. I, we all have a laugh, but you, you've got to, to, to get to the top. Mm -hmm. You've got to be. You've got to be something. You know, I, you put a ball. I'll chase a ball. Somebody said to me, <laughs> Peter Martin was said to me, I would chase a an empty empty Chris pack in a windy day. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said I would chase lost causes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that was part of my job. That was mm -hmm. part of made me who I am and my fitness. I was naturally fit, so but. I, you know, you've got to come in every day and train. You know, if you were at a night before, the boys will cover for you if you come in and do mm. your bit. Um, you know, as long as, you, as, long as I, I, I didn't do it too often. I was, I was late on a Monday morning, mm. usually coming up for London mm. when I was at Celtic. But it was, people say I was never there and all that. It was only one day, the, the first right. week that I was late, I didn't come back to Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> the following month. Oh, no, I phoned me Joe and I says, Joe, it was 10 past 8 and I phoned Joe and I says, Joe, I'm not going to make my flight. Mm -hmm. I said, tell the gaffer I'm, I'm not going to make it, I'm going to be late. And he says, Mac, it's 10 past 8 on Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a good weekend. <laughs> Jig as well, but if you'd... If that was you'd... the first weekend I've ever met Ray Winston, so I'm blaming him. Oh, is that? I blame oh, Ray. Oh, <laughs> God, yeah. That boy can drink. But drink <laughs> London, see, drink as well, but Frank, if you'd... Knuckled down and never drank, Jink, you could have excelled even further. I don't think so because I don't know if, I, if I'd uh, the ability to do that. I, I done, I done well. My natural ability was just, was running. Listen, at the World Cup, there's two players who were meant to play with each other. It was myself and Charlie Nicholas. Mm -hmm. Everyone in football knew that. Um, and the press took us away and got us dressed up as cowboys and that. We were at a place called Santa Fe. And, and Fergie never liked it <clears throat> because the press were picking the team. But he, he, he made the wrong decision. You know, he, he didn't play me. I was fucking top goal scorer. In, I was second top goal scorer in Europe. But was that the decision? Or was it I Celtic was, Rangers? I didn't come in to play nah, with that? No. Nah. Well, he, knew, he told me, Graham Soonis told me that Fergie would drop him one of the games because Graham told me he was going to buy Rangers. And Fergie wanted the manager's job at Rangers. <clears throat> so there was politics there. And, mm -hmm. You know, and you're not going to tell me. I still believe that Kenny never went to the World Cup in 86 because Hansen never went. Mm -hmm. You know, Hansen was the best defender I've ever played against. You know, Muller and McLeish were great. Hegarty and Neri were great together. But if you're going to play against the best strikers in world football, you need somebody that's won the Champions League a couple of times. Mm -hmm. You and know, never got and team. Hansen never got I mean, got in squad. You're joking. <clears throat> so he never took him. Mm -hmm. um, and Fergie uh, fell out with Kenny because I think, you know, Kenny says he was injured, but he wasn't. That, that's the reason. And then he dropped soon as one of the the one game that in this world of football you want Graham Soonest to play in was against Uruguay. And he never played him. And it's politics, it was wrong. It was it was deadly wrong. Um I've had to help him. I mean when he dropped me, I, I wasn't happy with it, you know, and he played Paul Sturrock and I mean look he's a good player, but fucking me and Charlie were meant mm. to play with each other. It was just two players that were meant at the biggest stage. We, we got at the latter end of our career, we got to Celtic together. Second part, the second time I was there, and what a laugh we had playing up front together with Megan people and stepping over it. And it was just, you could tell that we were just meant to play with each other. Mm -hmm. Charlie wants everything at feet, I'll do the run. <clears throat> so that was my um, biggest regret, the World Cup, because I get put on twice, but I should have been on fire. Gary Lineker won a golden boot. Was that the season you, you read the <clears throat> season? 28 goals, yeah. Uh -huh. But there's no, that's some feat. Nobody's, there's not many people scoring me on 20 goals no, in that division. Scored 26 league goals. Um, me and Tony scored 56 goal between us or something like that, which is magnificent. Mm -hmm. That was a great, great achievement. You still speak to Tony? I, used to see him, I was on the phone to him this morning, actually. Yeah, he phoned me this morning. We've got a couple of gigs coming up in October. So, I, Tony's all right. I was phoning him because he gets shot. I felt sorry for him. <coughs> <coughs> you get what? He gets shot in that film, um, 
the the football one that was done at West Ham a couple of years ago. Oh, uh, football factory. No, it's casual no, one. The one that's one that's sitting there with a big wrestler. Um, what? What? Batista. Batista. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Does it get done in it? He gets shot. <laughs> I see you should get shot at the beginning of the film. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's good. He's, Tony's, Tony's great. We, we go out more now than what we did when we played together. Mm-hmm. He never, he never, <laughs> Tony never knew. Oh, he was dedicated. He used to go home and write wee diagrams and about how he scored and all that. Oh, a lot of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I, used, I used to go and tell somebody. <laughs> Because uh, you get a lot of work, don't you, Frank? You still get everybody wants your company. Uh, You're a guy everybody wants to I be around. I could do I could do well in London. It's great. Mm. Uh, it's obviously when you get down there, you've got to speak a lot slower. Was the crazy not ever about doing that? No, no, no. They were they were going. I knew some of the boys up in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I knew a lot of the boys down there. So, but like, you know what? When I went down there, there was a there's a firm called the ICF, mm-hmm. and uh, there were West Ham boys, and they looked after me. I didn't realise. I used to go out and all that. And I remember one time in a pub and I was on my way into London with a girlfriend and and uh, this guy would give me a hard time and I'm talking bollocks to that. She stepped over a line. So I says, wait here to the girl. And I says, wait, me, go I'm going to talk. And he follows me, I'm going to knock him out and all that. So the mountain boy came out of me. <laughs> Again, you seem to have him a lot. I went out of the toilet and I'm standing there and he, he, never, he never come in. And I come out and there was a big commotion and all that. And the boy, somebody, he'd followed me in, but somebody just sparkled him. And he put a wee calling card on him. Congratulations, you've just been done by the ICF. <laughs> no way. That's what he used to do. do. <laughs> Not people that put a wee card on him. So they're just the guys just spark them. It's the ICF looking after me. So I guess the ICF are one of the biggest Aye. gangs Aye. worldwide, Massive. isn't it? There's no name. Massive. Is it, it Mulwalde? Mulwalde hated. Aye, they hated. Aye. They're great boys. So it was the same as me. I used to wind everyone up. When I done, I bought my book out years and years ago, and, and they says, there's a wee bookshop across the road for Upton Park. And he says, what, um, what game do you want? Mm-hmm. I says, Millwall. He says, oh, you can't have Millwall. Mm-hmm. I says, I want Millwall. He says, Frank, security would be too much. I said, I don't care, I want Millwall. I don't care about security. Mm-hmm. So, and there's a big statue of all the boys that won the World Cup for West Ham. And so the ICF had my cast pennant and all that, and Andy Swallow, they all had to protect that. So they, they've got their soldiers, if you like, all, all looking after it. And they've got a couple of people outside the bookshop because <laughs> the Millwall supporters had to come by the shop. Uh-huh. And that's what I wanted. Because I, I couldn't stop laughing. I'm thinking, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Big 40 me and the Millwall. coming by. It's great. See, the, when you brought your book out, there was a guy, my old man used to work in the Cotton Club. Yes. Yeah, and oh, say, I, I, yes. it was, it was talking to Harry Bouncers, yeah. and he says, When you broke your book out, you said to Harry Bouncers, I it was eventually good to read that actually what I'd done because I can't remember. Ah, fuck I, can't remember. <laughs> I know, I know. Somebody, somebody says that's why they bring DVDs out. <laughs> <laughs> see, when you've got, see what's it, obviously in the new year stuff you've got wee Jonathan are yes. you pals with him? Jonathan no, Watson Johnny, Johnny's wee Rangers man I know Johnny well but not I know Johnny well but no mm-hmm. no because you in that mm-hmm. only an excuse you are the right. the main character listen it's I, I, think, I, I think Johnny must be must be doing something I don't know what he's done to get that <laughs> contract with the BBC because <laughs> it's, it's, it's not very good now I mean uh-huh. he went off the boil there's so much that he could have done mm-hmm. You know, like, I was laughing, it'd be coisty when he get put in garden and leave, and I never done nothing like that, and mm. I'm going, hey, why do you know how, because Coist is a great lad, and, mm. and he's a good fun, and he would mm. take it the way it's meant. Aye. Never done him. And I'm thinking, he's lost the plot of but and he's doing politicians and pop stars and that, and that's oh, not what it's supposed oh, to be about. Football, isn't it? So, when it does me, it's great, listen. The, do you handle it all right, but oh, does of course, it I love it. I mean, but the best one for me was, you know, the petrol station and all that people ask you they always ask you what's your favourite and, and I've never said as well as a person before you say anything but the, the best one was the petrol station I'm filling up and this car draws up and there's two blondes on the car and they're smiling and all that and I go into the petrol station and the guy says pump two and I say no yeah I'm working on <laughs> So I met and I met a, I met the girls for, that was in that. And she, oh, I was one of the girls. I'm going, oh, you? <laughs> Where did so, that come from? Then where's the bus? Is that because I, you're always apparently I had, apparently I had a, a bar when I used to have a bar in Glasgow, um, <laughs> and uh, I, my brother worked in the bar, and I was trying to open up a place called School Dinners. <laughs> it's a restaurant, but it's. Mm-hmm. Oh, you get whipped and all that. Great, great restaurant. <laughs> you can imagine why my. But anyway, I was doing interviews and I came into the bar and I had to go in the bank saying checks and all that usual stuff. And my brother says, Look, there's some girls here um, for interviews. 
for, for school dinners and for the restaurant. I says, okay. So I'm in the back and I back the community. I says, where are they girls? And it was Phil Differ's pal, Phil Differ writes everything for Johnny, and apparently his pal was at the bar speaking to my brother. And he says, what did he say? And he says, oh, he says where's the girls? And, and that's where it came from. He just changed it. He was a buzz. It was a buzz because uh, it stuck with you, but it stuck big time. And people say, say it. I go, no, I don't say that. You know, I've never heard you say that. I've never said that in my life. You know, where's the buzz? It has it stuck with you, but I don't. But it's a fucking. I wish. I wish I'd. Fucking, what do you call it? I'd do something. With it, you know, let's get ready to rumble. Or <laughs> He's a multi-millionaire for that phrase. <laughs> so I should. I should have paid into it, shouldn't I? See, anybody says you should have. Buzz. Because it is. Does Give people shout? Shout at you? Or oh, you're a multi-millionaire? <laughs> yeah, what oh. would you say the highlight of your career was? Um, oh no! Many. It should have been. It should have been. I've got a couple, but you know, winning the winning the league. And um, people think it's a cup final, but Celtic. But winning the league in the centenary year was so hard because Rangers had so, all the players they had, mm -hmm. magnificent players. You know, all the big boys for England. You know, Butcher, Roberts, Woods. Um, Butcher was a tough bastard. Wilkins. You know, they mm -hmm. Mark Walters, some great players. David Cooper still there. They had some great, great players. Coiste, what a team they had. You know, we Durante. I mean, it was brilliant. What a player he was. And unbelievable. So, it was in soon as played as well in a lot of games. So, mm -hmm. for us to go and win the league that year, we were so much the underdogs mm -hmm. because everyone at the bottom, all Celtic bought was me. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but when did jo Mo Johnson went and then when? And that was after it. More, more left, Celtic went to... Do you play with more? No, nah, he went to Nantes. I played him in Scotland, but he went to Nantes. And it, but when more went to Nantes, I rented his house. Is that a big mistake, his oh, part? He turned one of his bedrooms into a sauna. <laughs> that says everything, doesn't it? <laughs> Still cleaning it up the new. Oh, brilliant. Oh, it, was, it was brilliant. I made some good nights there. That's the and Rangers boys. That was in 88, uh, 89? No, oh, 87, 88, 89. It was, oh, it was incredible. So now I come back, I come back in um, 91, 92, something like that. So. And that's it. So after all the football, Frank, what's, what have you been doing with yourself then? What's I'm, the I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm doing all right. I, I got my, my, you know, I got my act together and I'm, hmm. I'm still, I've got, I left, I was in London, I was in Newcastle for 15 years, so hmm. I was married for a long time, so. Yeah, I'm back up the road. Didn't last. Lasted, but it didn't last. I'm back up the road now. I've met a girl, mm -hmm. and I've, I've been going it for five years now. So I've been going good. Everything's going good. I'm, she's good for me. Everyone says how good she is for me. You know, I think, fuck yeah, what can I? What can a person? What can a person be fucking? <laughs> what can I? What can a person be? Oh, you're so good for me. I'm like, fuck, was that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. But ah, so, <laughs> but it was all, it was all good fun. Uh -huh. It wasn't. You know, I've never. Hurt, I'm. I would like to think I've never hurt anyone in my life. Aye. You know, I've got. I've got a great. My first manager. I've got a great boy. You've met him, Jake. Aye, aye, great guy. Jake's. Mm -hmm. You know, and his mum's nuts as well. So, for him to have me and his mum mm -hmm. and um, be them, you no, know, that was part of the deal. Not like I wanted, he kept my name, so I'm, I'm delighted, you know. Mm -hmm. that, and he's a great lad, he's, he's, he's 20 odd now, and he's a great lad, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm delighted for him. I've got something that in this life that's uh, done proper. Makes you proud, Aye. but you've, got a, you've had a great career, mate. You I should had, be very I've proud had, of that. I've had a good life, you know, I've had Aye. a good life as well, and I've just done everything what the fans would do. I'm, I'm happy uh -huh. to, in the knowledge that people say, could, could you not know, have done more? And I'm going, well, the players I was up against, I mean, God, you imagine a Scotland team now playing mm -hmm. against, I mean, I had. Douglas, <laughs> uh, McCoy, Johnson, Charlie mm -hmm. Nicholas, Graham Sharp, the Evans striker, magnificent striker. David Speedy played with Chelsea. It was unbelievable for strikers. Um, and for me to get half a dozen caps or five caps, I'm delighted. You oh, know, I, I wish I'd, I wish I'd get more, but so it's long. But anybody you know, would be happy with half your career, Frank, man. Yeah. So what you've achieved, I think, is unbelievable. Right. I don't think many people went to England and done well, done as well as what I did. No so. scored as many goals as you anyway. No, no, but I'm, Scored as well, but you're saying, <laughs> <laughs> and on an after ah, park, yeah, is it? Yeah, but uh, I think, thanks, mate, for even coming on here, mate, and, and keep your time has been. Listen. I really appreciate that, and mm. your stories. Why is he coming on to you done that? Christmas <laughs> thing, thing. Thought, ah, yeah, mate, everybody feels that, sorry for me. I knew that would work. You know what? Was, yeah, you've done. You made the effort, so yeah. Good luck to you. Listen, I appreciate that, and listen, your stories are absolutely phenomenal. Wish you all the best for the future, Frank. Thank you. I really appreciate that, man. Cheers, James. Thank you.